Hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome to another full moon reading. This time it's the full moon in Virgo. Now I'm going to do the same as I always do. I'm going to start off with a little bit of information around this full moon and what the lunation means for you each of the zodiacs because of what house it's it's in at this point in time. If you're not interested in that information, fast forward to the reading, okay? But for those of you that want to hear the information, first off, I would like to thank Yasmin Boland very much for the information. I do love how she puts it across and I utilize all of her information. That's where we get our information from for these readings. So thank you, Yasmin Boland. And here's what she has to say for the full moon in Virgo that takes place March 18th around the world. No double dates here. Okay. Getting into it, astrology is actually a bit of a keywords game. Once you understand the keywords for the various signs, the planets and the houses, you're going to start to understand how astrology works. Now, some of the keywords for Virgo, which is the sign for the full moon this month, as you know, include chaste, reliable, and modest. So you might expect the full moon in Virgo to be rather mild mannered. However, that's not really the case now, as this year's full moon in Virgo is going to take place in alignment with the planet of getting down and dirty, Pluto. Pluto's been quite active lately, making this a very transformative period. And we're not even in the eclipse season yet. Transformation is a Pluto keyword, okay? And with Pluto, the transformations are often more psychological than material or physical. Now, I mention this because it's important to know that even if there are no tangible effects, there are often intangible ones. And as we go into this full moon, think about how you can transform the way you show up in the world every day and how you're serving the world. Every successful New Age teacher will tell you that it's when you flip from what's in it for me to how can I serve that your message starts getting out into the wider world. This is also a really good full moon for releasing any tendencies that you have to being either too critical of others or arguably even worse, too critical of yourself. Okay. So now we're going to go into what the lunation is going to mean for you. Now, Virgo, obviously this is going to be in your first house, but we're going to get to you in a minute. We're going to start with Aries, which is the sixth house. So Aries, this is going to affect your daily routines, including at work and your health and duty. Taurus, fifth house. This is all about romance, creativity, kids, your own or somebody else's, and your pursuit of pleasure as well as love affairs. Gemini, this is your fourth house, home and family, all things domestic, where you belong, and your past. Cancer, third house. This is going to affect your communication, siblings, neighbors, quick trips, early learning, and education. Leo, it's going to have an effect on your second house, which is all about cash, property and possessions, values, including how you value yourself. And here we go, Virgo. First house, this is all about your appearance and image, self-identity, and how you come across to others. Libra, this is going to be your 12th house, which is all about the deepest, darkest, most sensitive part of your chart. This is your fears, your spirituality, self-undoing, withdrawal, secret or hidden enemies. Scorpio, it's your 11th house, which is friends, networks, social circles, the internet, hopes, and wishes. Sagittarius, your 10th house, your career and ambitions, how you make your mark on the world, and what you're known for. Capricorn, 9th house, study, travel, the search for meaning and to understand life, higher learning, spirituality, and dreams. Aquarius, this is your 8th house, joint finances, credit cards, debts, sex. Anything you consider taboo, inheritance, and transformation. Pisces, this is going to be your seventh house. This is all about your lovers, your spouse and your ex, open enemies, any sort of partner, including business partners, 
and cooperation and competition. Okay, so let's get into the reading now. We're going to start with the um, Moonology deck. So, let's see. The first card for the Moonology deck is Full Moon in Virgo. You are good enough. This is something that needs to be worked on around this full moon, maybe releasing all of those um, not feeling good enough emotions, old way of thinking and believing, right? And then we have full moon, which is surrender to the divine. Full moons are always about surrendering, okay? It's all about letting go and releasing. New moons are all about newness. Starting something, maybe starting an, a new business or something along those lines. Now, this is the, um, oh, geez, um, the manifestation, the Moonology Manifestation Deck. And this is Full Moon in Virgo, which is Take Inspired Action. Interesting. Okay. Now we're going to start with, keep in mind, um, sorry guys, all the decks are listed down below. If I go into an extended, the link will be down there too, but click on the title. That'll drop down my description box and that's where you'll see the decks that I'm using. Okay. This is Queen of the Moon Oracle. Okay, first card out is card three. This is a waxing crescent one for timing and its realization. Card number two is 27 and it's waning crescent four. <laughs> Release. Perfect for this reading. Your third card is number 15, and it's the Waxing Gibbous 6. This is all about action. Now, this plays into Take Inspired Action, right? And this obviously plays into <laughs> Surrender to the Divine. And maybe you come to the realization that you are good enough. And your final card is number 7, and this is the Waxing Crescent 5, and it is all about nourishment. Wow, this looks to me like you are being nourished by the universe. You are receiving or about to receive from the universe. Okay, timing now. The first one that we have is the Waning Crescent 4. Release. Yeah, and this is um, March 29th. Hmm. You are going to be releasing something on or around the 29th of March. Now, we're going to get more information as we get more cards, too, right? So, now... The next one is the Waxing Crescent One, Realization. This is April 2nd. So you've got March 29th for the release. April 2nd is the Realization. And then you move into the Waxing Crescent Five, Nourishment, because the Waxing Crescent Five is April 6th. Interesting. And so obviously the last card we have here is the Waxing Gibbous 6. Um, action. The Waxing Gibbous 6 takes place on April 15th. So somewhere on or around April 15th, you're going to be asked to take action. And it looks like you release something, and once you release it, 
you have a realization. And then you start to be nourished and you can take action. I want to point out, if you haven't watched the Chosen reading that I did a couple weeks back, it takes a twist. You're going to want to watch that because that's exactly what this is talking about. Something gets released and as soon as it does, it it's there's no more resistance, right? And when there's no resistance, you can have a realization. You feel like a free spirit once you release. That's when the universe can nourish you or another word for that is reward you, gift you, law of attraction, things that you've been wanting, asking for, praying for. They start coming in. That's the nourishment. And then you take action on something. So let's see just exactly what is going on here. Okay, so this is um, Luna Somnia, the deck. So being that I'm somebody that I've already gone through this, I haven't taken action yet. Um, I am being nourished right now. I can't believe the stuff that's dropping in my lap. It, and it's like all of a sudden, and it's because I released something and released the resistance, I became very aware of my situation at that point. And that's when I started to receive like crazy. Okay, so on top of the release and realization, <laughs> and this was in that reading too for the Chosen Ones, the Five of Swords, this is all about how we go after things. And that's what the message was. When we go after things from a place of desperation or neediness or just huge desire, we tend to do it in a way that we don't care what the cost is. We just want it no matter what. But unfortunately, what happens when we go after things that way? We alienate ourselves from exactly what it is that we want. We push it away. So Spirit's message in the Chosen Ones was to use the Law of Attraction to draw things to you. And you don't even have to really try and draw things to you. If you've been in a place of resistance long enough and you're able to release whatever you need to to let go of the resistance, it just comes flooding into your life because it's been wanting to for a long time and you've been blocking it. So that could be the realization that you've been going at this all wrong up to this point. Now, on top of the realization and nourishment, you have the Two of Wands. You find yourself at a crossroads having to make a decision. Do I go this way or do I go this way? Now, I want to point out she's, she's looking toward the past, okay? She's got a wand here to the right, which would be the future. She's got a wand to the left, which would be the past. She's facing the past. And I feel like what the part of the realization is, is that she needs to let go of the past and turn and move toward the future. And that's when she starts to receive. That's when the resistance is released and you will start to receive now, on top of the nourishment and action, page of wands. As you know, the pages are messengers, and this one is the best one to get, in my opinion, because the page of wands always, always brings great news. It's always good news. Always. Wow. I will link the Chosen One video at the top here the end of the video bottom of the deck overall energy strength this is all about not using heavy-handed methods to achieve what it is that you want to achieve complete opposite of the five of swords okay it's all about using your intuition using the law of attraction it's not heavy-handed it's not forceful it's not chasing it's not being assertive or aggressive 
there will come a time when you need to take action, right? But until then, this is what spirit is asking of you. Okay, now we're going to get Gaia Oracle. On the Five of Swords and the Two of Wands, you've got Goddess of Creation, card number seven, transformation, creativity, and wholeness. Get creative, everyone. That is the best form of meditation. If you can sit down with something and start creating something that you love to do, you know, a hobby, a craft, playing guitar, singing, playing the piano, you know, dancing, whatever it is that you love. If you can get creative doing what you love, that is a form of meditation, right? That will also help you um, release and come to the realization that you need to come to in regards to letting go of an old way and moving on, moving forward, letting go of resistance, right? Now, on the Two of Wands and the Page of Wands, you've got card 13, Reflection, Illusion, Self-Examination, and Distortion. I feel like when you release and have that realization, because the Two of Wands is on the Realization card, and this is on the Two of Wands, diagonally. You have that epiphany or that awareness, the realization, whatever it is, that you need to let go of something that you're thinking, feeling, doing, something about the past. You need to let it go and move forward. This is the reflection here. This allows you to get out of the distortion, the illusion. Because up in here, there's illusion taking place, right? And when you do release that, that's when you get rewarded. That's when you start receiving. That puts you in the receiving mode because it, it unblocks you. Okay, what are we going to get over here? No? Well, hold on, guys. Oh. Oh. Okay. Divine Abundance. This is going to take you someplace very special. Divine love. This card has never come out of this deck yet. When you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. Wow. Talk about transformation. Holy cow. And this sits right underneath. The Two of Wands. That is beautiful. Okay. Now we're going to get... <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. A Synchronicity Oracle card. I'm hearing that when you get to this place of divine love, you will soar. Wow. You're waiting for the right time on something. Now, I want to point out that this is 
on this side of the reading, the action card is on the right side of the reading. So this is why it's over here, because at this point, you are waiting for the right time, waiting for the guidance, likely, because I'm pretty sure you're being guided at this point in time, divinely guided, or you will be when you reach this point here. Okay, so now we're going to get a Just Ask Oracle card. <laughs> Use your intuition. By the time you get down here, this is going to be a piece of cake using your intuition to um, know the right time, know the action that you need to take, it's going to be a piece of cake once you get there. Absolutely. Okay. Now, we are going to get a message for you from Spirit. From This is Beyond Lemuria. Now, the fronts of all of these cards are different. They all have a different piece of artwork on them. And then there is a message on the back. And the artwork now is nice. This looks like twin flames to me. At the very least, soulmates. And the message is harmonic flight. This powerful image represents the divine we see when we look deeply into the eyes of another and our armor drops. When we meet another being present in the moment with no stories, judgments, or insecurities, when we harmonize our energies with another, we can soar to the sky. And wasn't that the message here? When you get to this place, you will soar. Wow. We can guide each other higher and higher by encouraging all that has been weighing us down to drop away. And that's this up here, the release. The bonds you share give you the power to transmute fear. Put time and awareness into resolving karmic connections or they will continue to play out. There may also be a life-changing connection on the horizon. Ooh! Oh, wow! This played into every message that came through in this reading. Thank you, angels. Wow. <laughs> okay, we're going to get one more message for you from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. talks repairing the body mind and spirit i'm going to hold this up to the camera while i read it from the book for you hang on okay there you go now, that is card 39, which breaks down to a 12, which breaks down to a 3, which is all about evolution. And it says, eliminating toxic thinking, repairing the body, mind, spirit, and cleaning house. When the Metox card appears, it challenges you to discard the deep, dearly held judgments that you have passed over yourself and others. Release the people who you feel wronged or offended you. There's a lot of release in here, and that is what this full moon is all about, and you have the release card here. Recognize that they mirror the shadow aspects of your own soul. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow. Only then can you call from your life the toxic people you have allowed into your inner circle. It's time for a cleaning of your proverbial house 
Get rid of the thoughts and personal judgments poisoning your mind. Eliminate the inauthentic beliefs of others that you've adopted as your own. Do so before your mind makes you sick. And empty your literal cupboards of the unhealthy junk food poisoning, poisoning your body. Fast for one day or skip a meal to allow your body to cleanse itself and rid itself of toxins. Metox appears as a warning that you can no longer postpone the self-care and pampering you long for. The time is now. Do healthy maintenance on your body before you have to make repairs that you will never quite recover from. Metox has come to caution you that it is not too late, but you are at the 11th hour. Do not deprive yourself of the health you deserve. You know, it's interesting that that's the card that came out because I got to tell you, lately, that's where I've been on a health kick. I've, you know, come to a place where I've decided that I'm not going to eat animal protein so much anymore, if at all. I'm not going to, you know, condemn myself to that. If I don't eat animal meat, great, or animal protein, great. If I do, well than I do but it's going to be rare because I want to do this for me I want to detox so interesting that this came about at this point in time because that's exactly where I've been guided to and I think that's what you're being guided to here as well but also because you are headed for a life-changing connection right you want to come together with your soulmate then you got to be vibrating at a pretty high level and part of that is detoxing that's what i've got for you for the full moon this is an amazing reading i hope it helps you i hope it resonates for you and i hope it gives you the guidance you're looking for i love you guys and i will see you in the next one